I would like to discuss the number one nutrient in boosting your collagen. Now it's not vitamin C, even though vitamin C definitely helps collagen, but it's something else. Now, what is collagen? Collagen is that protein that connects everything together. Out of all the protein in your body, about 35% of it is collagen. So it's a connective tissue. It makes up your cartilage, your muscles, your tendons, your ligaments, your eyes, the fascia, the stuff that holds all your muscles together. It's below your skin, right on top of your muscles. It makes up your bone, even your teeth, and it's all around your skin. And I think a lot of people are trying to boost their collagen by consuming collagen, when in fact, they're missing something else. And this talk is inspired by this book that I've been reading, Soil, Grass, and Cancer, The Link Between Human and Animal Health and the Mineral Balance in the Soil. It's a fascinating book on nutrition, talking about the relationship between the animals that we eat and the animals that eat the grass that comes from certain soils. So if there's some mineral missing in the soil, it's going to be missing in the plant, which the animals eat, and then we eat the animals, so we're going to be deficient as well. And the number one nutrient to boost collagen is copper. So copper has a direct effect on making collagen, preventing the loss of collagen, making elastin, which is a, uh, a protein that uh, supports the structural integrity of collagen. And so this trace mineral needed in a very small amount is necessary um, in the enzymes that allow proteins to form. And so the copper enzymes are all about structural integrity. So if you are deficient in copper, there are several things that can happen with your body tissue. Number one, it can lead to something called swayback or lordosis. Now this happens in animals as well, like horses, but it also happens in humans where you have this excess lower back curve. And that occurs because you don't have the structural stability to hold everything together. So things are becoming a little bit too loose. Now it can also show up in your skin as loose skin. And as a side note, copper has a lot of additional benefits, including being able to tolerate the sun longer. Now, what about hernias? Well, there's some great research. I'll put the link down below. This shows the relationship between people having hernias with a significant deficiency in copper. And that goes for all different types of hernias, whether they're inguinal or hiatal, because you need the structural integrity that copper gives to hold everything together real nicely. Copper supports your joints. So if your joints are weak or they're falling apart, chances are there could be a copper deficiency. And also with muscles, if your muscles are weak, you may be deficient in copper. Athletes that have sufficient copper have more endurance. They're more hydrated. They can go longer without drinking water. So just think about exercise and the involvement of collagen and connective tissue. I mean, you're talking about joints, muscles, everything. Your lower back discs need copper to make them very, very strong. Your blood vessels need copper to prevent things like varicose veins. So those are all the things that connect copper to collagen. But let's talk about some other benefits of copper. If you have an iron deficiency anemia situation and you don't have enough copper and you take iron, you're not gonna be able to fix your anemia. Copper is really necessary with your, um, your immune system, your white blood cells, as well as the size and shape of your red blood cells. If you're deficient in copper, you can have a disorder where you're sweating excessively. And copper is also involved with melanin, which gives you that pigment. So if you're deficient in copper, you can gray prematurely. Copper also uh, supports the brain and it can help you keep your balance in the dark or when your eyes are closed. So if you close your eyes and you feel dizzy or disoriented, that could be a copper deficiency. So let's say, for example, you're gonna take a shower and you take off your shirt, that momentary lack of light can affect your equilibrium and your balance. Having enough copper can also keep your uric acid in check. Copper is necessary to detoxify fluoride. And by the way, the more fluoride you have in your body, the less copper you're gonna have. And copper has been known to help warm up feet. And that could be because it helps you transport iron, which is necessary in hemoglobin. All right, so now what are the foods that are high in copper? Liver, kidney, oysters, shellfish, shiitake mushrooms, and sesame seeds. 
Now, what are the common causes of a copper deficiency? Well, the, probably the biggest cause is that we just don't have enough copper in our soils, which then translate to a copper deficiency in the foods that we eat. You're also going to see a copper deficiency after gastric bypass surgery. You can also get a deficiency if you take too much ascorbic acid, okay, which is part of the vitamin C complex. Normally, uh, copper is supposed to be part of the vitamin C complex as an enzyme. But if you're taking just a lot of ascorbic acid out of the normal complex, that can create a deficiency of copper too. Now, another common cause of a copper deficiency is by someone taking too much zinc. And so recently, a lot of people have been on the bandwagon to take a lot of zinc. And they've probably been taking zinc out of the, the complex of a lot of trace minerals, including copper. And taking too much zinc over a period of time can throw off your copper ratios, having you be deficient in copper. So too much zinc can lower copper, too much copper can lower zinc. Both zinc and copper work together. And this is why I always recommend that you get your trace minerals in a complex. Too much sugar, especially fructose, can create a copper deficiency. Alcohol can create a deficiency as well as consuming too much fiber. Now I'm not talking about the fiber from your foods, um, that come with these trace minerals. I'm talking about all these new functional fibers that people are adding in the so-called keto-friendly bars or different foods. Now, since we're on the topic of collagen, and probably a lot of people are interested in anti-aging, I think the next video for you to watch would be this one right here. Check it out.